All right, what's the crack? Welcome to the Tony Catwell Shit Show. I'm Tony Catwell, and I have a guest again this week. I'm banging them out. I've got some unbelievable people here. Joining me this week is uh, is actor, is comedian, is musician, Michael Fry, joining me in the shed. We talk about his writing process. We talk about how he comes up with a hook, which is a hard thing to do in music. We talk about being uh, awkward little Bridgets and not being funny in school. Um, and it's a really cool and fun and open and honest chat. So thank you very much, Michael Fry, for coming on the pod. This is me and MF talking in the shed. Enjoy. One, two. Michael Fry here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> this isn't the, the Michael Fry show on Joe. Uh, no, that was Big Dirty Fridays. Oh, Big Dirty the Fridays. The Michael Fry show is on BBC Sounds and it's available everywhere. Oh, uh, sorry. If your listeners would like to. I'm so glad you, are you so glad you <laughs> held out for the Michael Fry show for that? Uh... I don't know. It was it was the default title. Literally, the guy was like, nice. "It's a Michael Fry show." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." I'm Sean <laughs> Kira, if I'm this. So I was like, "Yeah." Um, it's all my shit, though, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, you so you worked you used to work at Joe. Yep. Um Were you were you courted? Were you groomed there? I was <laughs> uh, in a very legal way. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, I got a message from Niall McGarry when I was working for Tourism Ireland, mm. and at the time, the promise was that I was going to go to New York. And I was like, well, uh, no, I, I'm going to go to New York. And then that all of that fell through. And then I got a message then from Justine, who's on the social team, mm. being like, are you still available? Because I, oh, I was back in the South and I was mm. like, yeah, fuck, let's go. So That's great. Um, and it was great. It was a really cool place to work. I was I, I had one of those kind of um, meetings uh, with, with, with them and Joe. Mm. It wasn't Niall. Who would it have been? Paddy. Paddy. Yeah. I had a good meeting with Paddy. Paddy, very ambitious guy, really wanted it, mm. really, you know, had this whole idea of like, you know, why isn't there like a kind of Irish SNL, you know, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, he yeah. was a very good tastemaker of finding finding people, yeah. but it ultimately just didn't come to fruition. I think, no. I, I think I shocked him one day where like I was made, I was made redundant, which was the thing that actually allowed me to start my job because yeah. I tried to quit my job. I've said it before on the podcast, tried mm. to quit my job while in London because I was moving back. And they're like, oh, just work from Dublin. And I was like, okay. And then they had to sack me a month later because I wasn't doing any work <laughs> and pay me redundancy. So oh, it was kind incredible. of like, it was okay. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So so it meant that I didn't have to work for six months and could properly start. So when that happened, I think I like I was like, Paddy, I need to meet you. And I was like, and I had this whole thing of like, let's make this happen. Give me the job. Yeah. yeah and yeah, it was yeah. real like, it was, <laughs> it was just, and he was like, I, I don't know. I don't like, what would the job be? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he's like, I could put you in sales and you could do some kind of comedy in the side. Cause you kind of had to have, there was no, yeah. there was no See, full-time job I you was, can have there. Yeah. When I was there, me and Justine were the social team. So I was a, a junior social media executive, I think. And basically at the start, there wasn't as much sponsored stuff. So you had time, but then, they just started doing really well and they kept hiring mm. salespeople. Um, and then the bottleneck was me and Justine trying to put out all these ads and then being like, we do something funny and we're like, I'm not time. <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, but, so we just kind of ended up doing stuff outside of it. But yeah. even even my kind of personal social channels, I, could, I just wasn't making as much stuff when I was working there. Mm. But I still got to meet some really cool people and the process of making things for social and like my skill set increased because mm. I now knew how to edit stuff or subtitle stuff or, yeah. um, you know, uh, produce podcasts and just random shit like that. So it was great for that, mm. you know. Um, I learned loads when I was there. But um, yeah, just I went to London then and worked for The Mirror. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, yeah, I was a social media editor. The, the whole thing was that, like, okay, I'd worked for a news site before, and I was like, right, this will set me up, and I'll leave after a month or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, suddenly London didn't exist anymore, and everyone was at home, and it was like, well, I'm not going to quit my job now. We're in the middle of a fucking right. unprecedented thing. So I was there for as long as as the COVID was <laughs> happening, and then I just came home. So you know. Really? you weren't, So you were not pretty much over there in COVID and then just having to stay indoors and just... Yeah. A, oh, God. I arrived to London, uh, spent six weeks looking looking for accommodation and at the end of the six weeks Boris and Ends locked in so I found a place to live had lived there maybe normally for maybe two weeks and then that was it Do you know it was just kind of oh my god shit so yeah um, didn't really get the London experience you know you still let's on the cards I mean it's gotta be right I think so yeah I think um, more so because I want to live in a big city mm. you know I think um, Dublin is a certain size and I'd just like to go somewhere bigger mm -hmm. that's kind of it Um but, I mean, there's there's plenty you can do here. I mean, uh, Sean Burke would tell you he's kind of moved to London to start a comedy career in Ireland, as he was what he did. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, a lot of the work yeah. is here. So it's kind of like, I don't know. When you were at Joe, did you ever get terrified when there was like a sales call being like, guys, great news, we're going to make 20 million next year? 
<laughs> like because yeah. I remember seeing that like whoever the the boss was in there and uh, and and just being like. We've had monumental profits, mm. you know, but next year we're making 20 million. And I'm like, oh, my God, like my heart breaks for the people who are actually probably just wanting to make silly gags. Yeah, um, sometimes, you know, where you see they've hired maybe three new salespeople, but mm. nobody on the content signed, you know, mm. that kind of thing. So that was kind of happening. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's not for me to say how to manage these things because I have a fucking clue what I'm doing. So, like, fair, you know fair, I mean? fair. Um, so, yeah. But I mean, I did. I got to make loads of cool stuff. I had a Game of Thrones podcast with Carl Kinsella. Oh, yeah. Like a companion thing. And it was great. I had so much fun doing that. That was yeah. like my favorite thing I did, you know? Um, what, what is What is your... What is your favorite part of the process of making something, you know, mm. like from like early inception of just seeing something like, oh, that'd be, that's a fun little idea. I wouldn't mind doing something like that or actually scripting or recording or the edit process or putting it out. Where 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 is it for you? Oh, I like the recording bit um, because I don't I never really used to script things. And it was always this thing where it was like because uh, a lot of my Jay-Z over here <laughs> straight off the top of the dome, mate. <laughs> for, for when you want to get commission for things you need a fucking script so yeah, i mean yeah annoying, I, I had to get used to it um but there is this kind of thing where i'm like you know when you record stuff because a lot of my my earlier sketches were radio sketches and it was kind of like conversations you'd have with people mm. so then you're talking and then you're talking in that person's tone of voice and then you say something that makes you laugh and yeah you're like, oh i'm keeping that mm. and then you know eventually you get something that's really funny so that was great it's, yeah. it's so much fun doing that and being like wouldn't it be so funny if i did this yeah you know, that kind of thing yeah, I, I really yeah. like that bit the actual putting it all together is kind of, I'm like, oh, you know, mm. or you have to edit stuff or you have to, you know, I, I, I do like it. I could spend hours doing it and I wouldn't notice, but mm. I, um, it's just not as fun as actually coming up with it, you know? Yeah. Like the writer's room stuff I've done with um, the other comedians for Say No Worries If Not or uh, the Michael Fry show or I have another BBC pilot coming soon, but like it's kind of Ooh. like, um, it's so much fun because it's like you literally yeah. sit in there with your favorite people and you try and make each other laugh and it's I great. Was, I was talking to Peter McGann about that, and he was talking about because it's 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 not very common, and um, you know, I mean, there's nothing really to base this on in in mm. Ireland to have like a writers' room. You know, I know Republic of Telly didn't do that. You would kind of just people would write some things and then bring them in and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But like he, even Peter was saying, it's like it's the one time you feel like, oh my god, I am a tradesman and this is my trade, and I'm actually not too bad at this trade. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, like what am I like? The first time I did a writers' room was actually, was actually for Get Up to Fuck, and mm, it was the best crack that ever. That was so much fun. Um, and it was just kind of like that's how I now run my writer's rooms I'm like okay because Shane was very much like we need to begin a begin beginning middle and end you yeah. write things quite quickly but it's much quicker than doing it on your own because you have several brains working on the same problem mm -hmm. and it's like okay that made me laugh let's put that in there mm -hmm. and whether it makes it in or not whatever but it, it helps with the overall process so that's how I've worked it with say Sean Burke and Eleanor Morton or Sean and Kira Knight for the Michael Fry show or anyone else I've worked with it's mm -hmm. um that's how we usually do it, you know. I like the organized fun of it all. I do. I think like, I do I like being like, "Can we please focus on what's being said here? <laughs> you know, yeah, can we yeah, please, yeah, yeah. you know, focus on um, an end for the the pissed up chef." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I just, just, I love a good spider graph as yes. well. Yes. So you write it and you're like, right, put everyone just throw shit at the yeah. wall and see what happens. You know? Yeah. So it's so much fun. I, I much, I've realized now that I much prefer the collaborative aspect of of the whole thing. Same. Like I find. Like I find going even going to a comedy gig of my own, I like just like it's very, it's very lonely. Yeah, and it's it's been, it's been so nice going with you Killian know? the whole time and doing yeah, stuff with great. him because it's like, yeah, we're we're both in this together, and it's like if it goes badly, it's fine because he's there. You know, mm. it's it's actually quite nice. But I thought when I started doing collaborative work, I was like, am I actually able to work with other people? Mm. And like when we were in the room, I was like, am I being because I because I had one hour of sleep, I think, yeah. every single day I get up to fuck for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I was like, fuck, I'll, I'll do the writing then. Fuck it, whatever. And yeah. then I, I was kind of like, almost like kind of getting people to shut up and be like, come on, just do yeah, the work. Yeah, it was great. You know, that kind of thing. Um, I find if there's no... You, there was a lot of like inflections with markers that's yeah. great you know like yeah, let's yeah, get that yeah, on the yeah. board you know <laughs> so, uh, yeah i love running a brainstorm i love <laughs> yeah but it's one of those things like uh i always feel like if i was in the first task of the apprentice i'd be the guy who'd be like i'll be the project manager because i'm yeah. like i just feel like when there's a vacuum i'll come in and take power sure not that i want it but it's more that like so there's because someone needs to do it yeah you know? yeah exactly um i'd love it if someone else did it and i could just be silly but like i just no, rather, but you're very efficient you know, and i don't think i think you you know you kind of want to know like what's the plan, and if there isn't a plan, let's get the plan, and then we can all yeah. then we can fuck around. <laughs> Which is why like things like improv, and like I did a live podcast years there recently, mm. and I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? like yeah, kind of yeah. came out afterwards being like, oh fuck, I didn't say anything, or like do you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I yeah. find that very difficult 
like the banter mm. thing and stuff that's unplanned and all that kind of stuff because I'm just very nervous. So it mm. doesn't, do you know what I mean? It doesn't sit well with me. Like, yeah. And I love panel shows. I love like, I when I was a kid, I watched all of them. You know, like say, I lived on the BBC, like yeah. BBC Two panel shows, like Have I Got News For You or Nevermind The Buzzcocks or all totally. of those things. And I was like, I'd love to be on those shows. And now as an adult, I'm like, I would be so terrible. You well, know? no, you, you would actually be good because you would do the thing that people actually do on panel shows, which yeah. is plan everything and then get good enough at acting to make it look like it's off the cuff or off yeah, the top of the dome. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. you can tell the ones that are not planned. You know, usually something John Locke might have said because mm. people just go ape shit because you can just tell in the energy that that's you yeah. know so not a, a, a pre planned bit. Oh, my but, favorite joke of his, uh, and rest in peace, John Locke. Rest I did in love peace. him. But oh was, my god, they were talking about an eight out of ten cats. What you would want? What you'd spend your money on if you won the lottery? Mm. And he said, "Is it leather cutlery?" <laughs> and I just. <laughs> <laughs> he was like doing the action of eating with leather cutlery, be like, oh, like it just constantly tastes in leather. Like, <laughs> it's like one of those things that's like fancy but fucking absolutely yeah. horrible. Like, you know, and so <laughs> random that you're almost blindsided by like the what? Yeah, by the answer. <laughs> um, what were you? What were you like in school? Were you you class clown? You comedy comedy? Fuck? Everyone asked me that, and no, I wasn't. Mm. I was so afraid of everyone. And everything. <laughs> like, I literally. And I'm sure it's really puzzling for anyone who went to school with me to sure. see me as a comedian now. Like one of my one of the guys I went to school that came up to me after your gig, mm. and I was like, "Oh my god, I hadn't seen him in like ten years or whatever." And I'm sure he's like completely, like, "What the fuck happened? Do you know how did this happen?" But yeah. it was like I just couldn't open my mouth. I was so afraid of being bullied, mm. and I never was bullied. Mm. And I look back at it now, say that period, like secondary school, and I'm like, "Fuck, I didn't make the most of that." You know? Oh God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm but like, too. how could you? You're a kid. But like, it's also like I just was afraid of being slagged the whole time. Yeah, you know? I so. know. I had that as well. I well, like, I did. Maybe not with like kind of talking, but I definitely had the kind of like, uh, yeah. I, I was definitely like, um, <laughs> it was more so with girls. I was all like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna keep my heart in, t- in, you know, yeah, intact yeah. here and not <laughs> kind of risk the chance of it being. But like, what, what was your what was your outlet then? Like, what was your early outlet? Like, like. Did you have like a core group of friends and did you make each other laugh a lot of shitload? Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, I, I have a good friend of mine, Matt, who you've met before. He does my oh, sound yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. and he is absolutely hilarious. And like it, it's definitely like informed how my humour is and the stuff we laughed at or whatever. Yeah. Like, and I've, I've said this in kind of other podcasts. We used to have this joke. Uh, so this isn't original. I'm sorry. You have to hear it again <laughs> if right. anyone's heard me on the laughs of your life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we had this joke, me and him, where uh, he'd be like, oh, my dad's here. And see, his dad drove like a purple van, right? Yeah. So then we had this thing that his dad was a van. And then it was like, uh, we had this whole thing, because like, I don't know, his parents are like not together or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and we had this whole thing, like just divorce dad drama, but the dad is literally a van. <laughs> and then this whole thing where it's like, his dad is late for his birthday, but when yeah. he arrives, he crashes through the, the living room and kills everyone. And then he's just like, you ruined everything. And he runs upstairs. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And then it's like, oh, what did you get your dad for Father's Day? Did you get him petrol? Did you get him new tires? Like all that That's kind of stuff. So fun. And then his dad got another job where he wasn't driving a van. And I was like, what does he drive now? A flicker. And then we had this whole thing with him going down the motorway in a flicker. It was just like, it's just like getting something funny and imagining it, like imagining something funny in very normal circumstances yeah. and tearing the arse out of it. Just yeah. how I make jokes, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that kind of bizarre. We, we love that kind of stuff, you know. And so when was the first thing that you had to be like, oh, well, now I have to be like publicly funny. And maybe that's like a written thing that you did or like a, or a sketch that you put mm. out or maybe even like, like a, I don't know, like an article or something like a school paper. Was there, was there anything that you kind of had to publicly present that people gave you good feedback on? I wrote a play when I was 11. Yeah? Uh, yeah, because the teacher at the time wasn't doing a play and I was like, this is bullshit. I want to do a play. Like, yeah. I haven't done one. Uh, and... <laughs> This is bullshit. Sure, this is yeah, bullshit. Yeah, and she, miss. she, because I was like, "Can I write it?" And she was like, "Yeah, mm. I guess." Like, if you stop annoying me, like I was yeah. going, "Yeah." So I did it. So I wrote a, a pantomime version of Aladdin, because uh, I'd gone to the Gaiety pantomimes and loved them at the time, and I was oh, like, yeah. "I can do this." So, so the one like Dustin and Twink. Or yeah, was that? That, that, yeah, that. Twink yeah. and Frank Kelly was in it once. You okay, know, yeah, yeah. Jack, Brian Ormond, I think, was Jack of the Beanstalk <laughs> or something. You know, those <laughs> kind of random Irish celebrities just appear. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I wrote that and it was terrible, I assume, but um, yeah. and I'd love to see it back. I really yeah. would. But I put myself in like the starring role, but like <laughs> on the sly, like as in like I wasn't Aladdin, I was the genie. Oh, and I yeah. had I sang I Want to Break Free by Queen because my dad really liked Queen. And that's, it was, yeah, that's so sweet. And it was great. It was kind of like the, the only time a teacher, I think, had ever been like, yeah, you could be good at that. Go and do that and, and yeah. go ahead. And I really appreciate that, you know. 
Um, and I just did not repeat that until I went to university and I was in final year. <laughs> you know, so there was a big gap. <laughs> and then, uh, like, I did an acting, I did like the Gaiety School of Acting, like, day course. Oh, yeah. In secondary school. And it was kind of my little weekend thing where all of us freaks would get together because uh, we were all quite strange and quite, you know, yeah. unusual or whatever. But it was so much fun because it was like, it definitely helped my improv mm. and stuff like that. Uh, so it was, we wrote some really funny stuff in there, stuff we thought was funny. Uh, and then for final year of college, we did this kind of sketch show of players and I had such bad stage for it. I didn't do it. I didn't perform in it, oh, but no I wrote way. some of the sketches. Yeah. Um, and I were looking at it being like, I could have done that. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't do it. Yeah. Um, but the thing that actually got me into this is Twitter, is social mm. media. And I'd been building up followers for years and years and years. Mm. Um, and suddenly I was like, do you know what? like video just became available on Twitter because it wasn't for years mm. and I just started doing videos and then like I did loads of them before they were even funny you know mm. and mm. then then eventually you get something that hits and it was the news talk back and forth yeah and yeah that's kind of the, I mean the Grimes one was the you know that was Dairy, the big London one. Dairy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because I, I think I replied to you on that being like I wasn't going to post it so yeah I know yeah we were talking about it but um, yeah I cut I yeah that was like this made me laugh. Yeah. And what I realized is like when I have an instinctual ha ha ha, lots of other people do yes. as well. So it's yeah. kind of like I don't have an unusual sense of humor in that way. Yeah. I know it might be weird what I put out there, but it's like it still makes people laugh, you know. But it's also the fact that it's just like so recognizable and then just so unexpected. And mm. then also just like it's a banger of a tune as well. It's not like And your voice <laughs> as well. You just so you have such a good singing voice <laughs> and yeah. like you have so much heart in your in your performances. You know, even the Bureau de Change, you did the song about E.T., you know, like yeah, I mean, a romantic yeah. relationship with E.T., but like people laugh at the start and then they're like, oh, like this is beautiful. That's you the, know? Yeah, because I, I met people who voted for me afterwards because I was like, I, I was like, oh, they fixed that because I had a shit time the last two weeks. But then I actually met people who voted no, for me. No, you came like, third, oh, you, did, you fucking smashed it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, but and they were like, margin. and I was like, it's horrible, isn't it? They're like, no, I actually, I really believed you were in love yeah, with Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's so sweet. <laughs> So <laughs> you've got a very good you've a very good falsetto. I know you're a fan of kind of like a lot of eighties music. Like you 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 go you can do a Bronski beat like I like do a Bronski, like, that's yeah, my karaoke yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, can, yeah. you can smash that. You know, I know you've mentioned like ABC as well. Like you know, um, Larue was a big one. for Larue, me. yeah. When she came out to those annoying. Yeah, and has a helium voice. Yeah, and so I was like, I want to sound like that. And I was like, I had this whole thing where if I were to do stars in their eyes, that's who I would be. Yeah. I would do that. <laughs> You come out with the quip, mm. six foot one Larue. Yeah, and it would be amazing. <laughs> but like now, I've realised like that that artist is very obscure now, and it's like, do yeah, you know, it's I feel old. Like, yeah, you know, when Larue she was, was like huge, mainstream. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, she was on Kanye West's album. There's a there, you know, that one with Jay Z. Yeah, watch the throne. Watch the she's throne. on. Um, I think it's that. That's my bitch is the name of the song. Yeah, but yeah. she's in that, which is mad. Like, you yeah. know, I went to go see that. That uh, Jay Z was doing. Was when I lived in London. When I lived in Hackney, oh, yeah. there was like a Hackney weekend, and anyone who lived in Hackney got free tickets. Right. And I'd never felt cooler in my life, mm. so I got to go see Jay Z, and then Kanye came out, and um, that was good. That was a good thing then. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm wasn't... always nervous to mention him. Yeah, it like, wasn't oh. like now lock up your. He's now no longer one of my top Spotify artists. Uh, no, is, yeah, no, he was a couple of years ago, and now, yeah, I just so that's a lot of like active not listening active, to white supremacy, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But it is it is a fun. It's a very scary and lovely feeling putting something out that you're like, oh my god, people are going to think I'm so weird, mm. like you know. But like almost the the impermeable blanket of like, but I kind of don't care because it's I love it so much. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and it's online. It's not real people. No, it's you not know? real. You don't think about real. I think about like high scores all the yeah. time. Where I'm like, want to get higher than that one, mm. or like if it gets at least say it used to be like a thousand or it used to be 600 likes then it was a thousand now it's like i think it's two thousand that means i've done a good job mm, you know mm. um but also there's things where you're like i found that funny so fuck you yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and they're the ones that people come up to you randomly and mention it and you're like that didn't do very well but i love like they yeah. fucking loved it like yeah. you know, that kind of thing which i really like but that's the thing you know you kind of you can cast a kind of a wider net with some with some videos you know which is which is great but mm. it's also you also need to kind of reinforce the people that are there every day and like yeah they, they have their notifications turned on that you've you know dropped a video yeah. you know? so 
there's also that like oh I, they they get your humor inside and out and they mm. they really do appreciate those kind of smaller that's you know, the thing yeah people know. who actually you know listen to like people who listen to the michael fry mm. show because like it's really hard to get people to listen to anything or to, to even leave social media at all yeah um so it's it's I, I really do appreciate when people actually go outside of it and are like this was really good yeah that kind of thing there was a url people had to go to <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> you know, and it like brings impossible. you somewhere and it's inside the app and it's not quite you know it's like oh, i have to download the bbc sounds app i know oh you know what i mean and like, yeah. is it even available in Ireland and it's like that kind of thing do you know it's actually from Instagram to be like subscribe but then you have to log into your YouTube That's, yeah and it's the just, customer journey is just way too no, long no know? if it's more than one click people mm. just are not going to are not going to do it well, yeah two I think is which the, I liked you know when you put uh get up to fuck on your Instagram it's mm. great to just link it and be like there it is yeah and people watch the whole thing yeah it's great like you know? I mean the thing is you're kind of skewing the numbers a little bit because you're kind of like spreading it all out mm. you know and of course YouTube's probably a handy one to to grow mm. but um you're making music at the moment just for you you were saying yeah that's, just just for me that's just, great because i'm like yeah people enjoy the music i make and i still get quite a lot of regular listeners and like obviously the joke is over after two lists <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. it's obviously because they enjoy it and there's lots of people who are like in my comments being like where can i listen to music like this and you can name your influences or whatever mm. but it's yeah i just thought it's something i want to do so i'm going to go and do it and, that's great um I don't care how it does, you know, mm-hmm. I just, I literally, you know, whatever. Not that I'm not going to put my all into it. Yeah. But no, it's, it's it's just kind of like, I it's it doesn't affect me much if people don't listen to it or not. It's very personal. Well, so. there's a lot of people kind of been, you know, looking for your attention and your input. And mm. you've been, you've, you've done a, an amazing transition to like, I don't know, do things that people actually pay you to do. Yeah. <laughs> like what's the, what's the terminology <laughs> for that? You know, go from doing things from not getting any money to people actually saying, we want your input, we want you to write something. Mm. So it must be really kind of refreshing just to just do something just for you. Yeah, mm. it is actually. It's mm. it's it's kind of, I think, because the reason I started the, the sketches is because I was making music when I was bored and I realized I could, you know, if I had a drum pad, I could like trigger people talking to me. Mm. But I think because I was making music, I was in the creative space anyway. So I'm just like, I'm kind of in a bit of a lull at the moment, kind of comedically, yeah. but I'm kind of hoping because I'm making something else that mm-hmm. the creative juices are still flowing and that might translate into something else, you know? I've found that any time, any time I'm kind of in a bit of a rut, if I if I actually just try and learn like a new program or something like that, mm-hmm. like if it's Premiere Pro and realizing what I can do with that, or if it's, you know, I Snapchat know, filter. Snapchat filter. Yeah. And just going through them and just, you know. And seeing what you can make out of them. Yeah, you know? exactly. I think it just, that's what can kind of reinvigorate. Because you're just, it's just pure discovery and, you know, mm. and, and creativity. How are you feeling about um, Edinburgh? You got the Edinburgh Fringe. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> is that your butthole with little clenched lips Ooh. a little bit yeah that's the, the noise it makes uh, oh wow okay wow <laughs> one time I farted when I was in chemistry in secondary school and I tried to hold it in and then couldn't and it made I've never heard the noise since but it went ah! like that. <laughs> and I remember people turning around and people, what was that I was like oh I don't know like, it was just <laughs> um, but, yeah no yeah. I'm uh, I'm a little bit nervous about it because I went last year and I saw some really good shows yeah you had like a full like dossier of things that you went you went to we were going like three or four shows a day I went to 19 shows in like five days or something mad it was crazy like but it was so much fun and I went to see I made a purpose purposeful effort a conscious effort Mm. to see um duos because me and Killian were supposed to be doing the Dublin Fringe we hadn't written anything um with duos kind of um uh, people who do music so there's a guy called Rob Madge who does the show called My Son is a Queer what are you going to do about it and it's incredible Wow! because he was a West End child and it's all written like a musical and it's really really good and everyone's oh, wow. crying it was amazing uh, and I saw this woman called so there's Kylie Brakeman who's big on Twitter and she's mm-hmm. great and I met her kind of afterwards um, and she did her Linda Hollywood character and did this amazing thing where she managed to time herself perfectly in 15 minutes to do like someone's journey around Hollywood and I thought that was class mm. and I saw this woman called uh, Hannah Pilkis who's another US comedian and it was very similar to what I would like to do in that like she starts as herself uh, and then goes into being characters and she's really good at it kind of just makes quick transitions and it's just really funny and mm. I was like this is amazing and it's just her and it's you know that kind of thing uh, whereas me, it's me and Killian this time so we have people to play off uh, and I love coming in and out being silly mm-hmm. it's my favourite mm-hmm. thing in the world is not being myself yeah <laughs> so you know so our show is very much there's music in it um, 
which is kind of hard when you want to play smaller venues and stuff and yeah. particularly stuff that isn't music venues it can be difficult to get the right leads or mm. for it to sound nice um so we music and then killing does stand up and i interrupt him with some silly characters Very and nice. then we do the opposite i do stand up killing interrupts me with an ad and then a silly character and then i do a song by myself and then we close it with a character in a song, and it's great. Wow, that's you know? like um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Frankenstein, Johnny Lee Mil- Miller, where they play half of it, where one's the monster and one's the creature, oh, and then I they swap. Did that. Just was, like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the worst version of Killian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Have you ever seen Bradley Cooper do the Elephant Man? No, it's so offensive. It's so, <laughs> Is oh, it? he just pulls a funny face. He literally really? just pulls a face for the whole thing. Yeah, do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, uh, I suppose. Yeah, the, the voice isn't great. The John Merrick voice is really aged <laughs> quite a lot. Um, you're you're actually a, you're actually you are a good actor. You're a very good actor. Thank um, you. Yeah. What it's... are there any are there any principles of acting that you actually even consider when you're when you're acting? Is there anything? If someone were to ask you, well, I'm going to ask you. Mm. Um, what are what are what are some tools that you use that you've learned? You said water twice. So I was like, oh, I need to. <laughs> water. Water. Um, See, great listening. That's a good acting. Very good, yeah. 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 Observation. Observation. Rule number one. Yeah. Um, my whole thing, and I find this with uh, some kind of Irish shows sometimes, and Irish actors, because I think it's in our accent so we know when people aren't being sincere, mm. is that it can't sound read off and it has to sound like a real person, mm. which is why I avoided scripting for quite a long time mm. because I wanted to sound naturalistic or whatever. So that's my main thing is like, does this actually sound like a real person? Mm. Um, and then, but when you get into say camera, stuff on camera, you realize how you move is very important. And every facet of your face, even where you put your eyes. Mm. So you're always asking for where's the eye line? Where do I look for this? Mm. Um, like Dairy Girls, for example, I was kind of looking at, I just want to mention that, by the way. Yeah, I was on Dairy I was Girls. Gonna, I, come up. Um, I was on Dairy Girls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for that, uh, yeah. we were on a, a small, like an actual train. Mm. And I had the, the girls and Dylan in front of me. And it was kind of looking, where do I look? Because mm. I was just looking at the cameraman. He was like, underneath the mm. thing or whatever um, that's a, such a weird reality isn't it of like the angles that people actually have to because yeah. everything looks so put together but like I mean Sarah Silverman had a great thing where she she was like did a cameo on like NCIS or something mm. like that or like a, or Boston Legal or something like that and someone does the closing statement it's like 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 ladies you know members of the jury please mm. consider this and then they have to like duck <laughs> like it goes from this real like kind of like very stoic kind of like you know thank you very much and then mm. they like duck under the camera as they're kind of walking away yeah yeah you know, yeah, yeah. It's weird. But anyway sorry i Go think on. i saw this thing as well about how the aspect ratio on tv years ago because it used to be four or three mm. meant that people had to stand way too close yeah, to each other that, so yeah. you look at like yeah if, if it was real life you'd be like get away from me like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. so um there's a lot of that where you're standing either very close or very yeah. far away oh naturally so you know yeah. and some of the sets like i, I was on the toy show set for joe years ago and i was like this is tiny but mm. on camera it looks absolutely massive yeah it does look big you know yeah anyway sorry you were looking at the eye lines of the girls and and that's all i, was, I just wanted to mention i was a Derek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's just that it's kind of a bit unusual where you're kind of like you have to talk to yeah. uh say you're looking at dylan's shoulder when you're supposed to be talking to yes yeah Jamie lee or someone do you know that kind mm. of thing so there's that weirdness of um speaking to inanimate objects as if mm. they're people and then somebody replying at the other side of the room you know that yeah. kind of thing so isn't it so annoying that you just ha- you just have to know your lines like really well isn't that just so annoying yeah and like, I'm like you just have to like you have to because then you yeah. just when you know it then that's when you are not yeah when you're not thinking about it is when is the only time you're acting because yeah and that's the thing and there's somebody on the bigger productions they're always like the line is actually and you've maybe made one word of a difference mm. but it's like Right, you know, you don't know better than Lisa McGee. Come on, man. Like, do you know what I mean? This is very, <laughs> yeah. this is very much written. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, right, okay, I yeah. guess. But it, you could still be creative in how you say things mm. and how you kind of move and all that kind of stuff. So there, there is a creative aspect to it, which is nice. That's great. And you, you smashed it. It was great. And it was a, it was a good fucking juicy meaty roll. It was a good meaty. It was yeah. a good meaty roll. You can have a bit of fun with. I was in three different bits of it. Yeah. I was like a, a minor villain of the series. It was Genius. me and Sinead Keenan was the other one. It was just like very cool to be. Yeah, a minor guy. It was great. Can you tell us anything about uh, the pilot that you have that you've done? Oh no, <laughs> I cannot. Okay, I cannot. fine. Uh, it's currently production. Yeah. Okay. So we're writing it or whatever. So it's it's fun. Very yes. exciting. Yes, indeed. Very exciting. Um, Michael, what age were you when you stopped being a frigid? 
Oh, no, there's two answers to this. There's two answers to this, right? Oh, so really? There's, okay. an, there's an official answer, yeah. and there's a technical answer, right? Okay, so great. The technical answer is that I was 11, right? Oh! Uh, and a friend of mine, uh, we were at the back of the bus and decided that... Play mammies and daddies. Not even that. It was just that, that, like, basically, we just dared each other to kiss each other the whole time, and then it was like, oh, well... You're still a frigid. You need to. You need to lose your your frigidity. Frigidity. Yeah. Uh, so I, one of my friends did did that for me, which was nice. Um, oh, that's and nice. Yeah. Uh, so then I could say I wasn't a frigid. Yeah. But when actually I think I was about fourteen before I actually found someone who wanted to kiss me in, in real life. That's so sweet. Um, which is funny. But we got see we got caught when I was eleven, right? There's this kid uh, who came and saw us at the back of the bus and was like, "Oh my god!" Right? And told his mom, right? Uh, and his mom was like, "All oh, right, I better talk to you know the girl I shifted's mom." Mm-hmm. And because the 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 girl's brother was on the bus, the kid went, um, "No, no, no, don't worry," because you know her little brother's already going to tell his mom, right? Now the reason that's important is because when I got home and I realized I'd, I'd been caught, I prayed to God that I wouldn't be caught, oh right? Oh my God! And that miraculous thing happened, and even now I'm like, "Is there a God?" Because that's pretty <laughs> fucking mad. Like, so you know? is it? Were you like you were offering something to God? Like, were you offering kind of more more prayer, more, um, you know, loving support if this could just go away? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was very religious until I was like 14, maybe. So yeah. was I. You know? I used to think that like my internal monologue was a direct voice to like not the God telling me anything, but I whenever I would say things yeah. in my head. Oh, same. And I, and I kind of think now I still kind of have weird kind of a narrator syndrome. Mm. I think because I think in actual yeah. words to or, God. Oh, you've had a bad thought. And yeah. God's heard that. Yeah. You know, um. Yeah, I don't know. I was I was very religious, but then yeah, it just logic kind of takes over a little bit. What know? was was there anything? Were was there any relief or was there any um, joy or sadness or was there any emotion when you kind of fell out of it? Did Richard Dawkins help? Mm, no, <laughs> none of it really helped. I don't think it was more that like you know the church's stance on say gay people or mm. uh, abortion and things like that. I just didn't agree with and was kind of like, well, that's not true, mm. is it? Like you know, and then it's kind of. I it's my big thing is that I don't think there's an afterlife because how would we possibly perceive it when everything we think about and see and feel and whatever else is to do with our brains, mm. you know? So when your brain dies, how do you know what I mean? I just don't yeah. believe it. Do you know mm. what I mean? I just don't think there's a, there's an after, do you know? An afters, the big mm. afters, the in big the sky. afters in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it's like. Maybe when it's, you're not cognizant, you can't feel your arms anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the afterlife again. Um, yeah, I remember. Um, I remember just in school there, there being like you know you learn about the Reformation, which is a big mistake in Catholic school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you're like, hold on, we're still. Oh, we're in the bad one. Yeah, you know? I know. Yeah. Shit. So you're like, so, yeah. They're like, <laughs> so we did the you know Martin Luther was all like mm. you know the the papal bull and you know um, and like they're still selling of indulgences like you know um, but like I remember them just just saying well then of course then there was kind of Lutheranism and that kind of became Presbyterianism mm. Protestantism and I was like well like look miss like what's the fuck like what's the difference you know yeah yeah, yeah. And I'm like well I suppose what Protestants believe is what was directly written in the Bible by Jesus uh-huh. and what we believe is what gets interpreted by <laughs> a couple of very rich white people yeah <laughs> you know yeah, in the middle yeah, yeah. and like she broke she literally broke it down being like well we just kind of we take we put our own little spin on it and I'm like should we not be, well, miss should we not be listening to Jesus <laughs> like because Jesus now no but better you yeah. know and from then I was just like and it was literally like learning about it I was just kind of I was out I was just looking at priests being like mm. oh you're kind of almost like you're corrupting the word it's so weird now like even mm. my cousin's born again and uh, I was at his wedding and the pastor who was there you know like I was talking to him and I was like I kind of want I kind of want in you know yeah, like, yeah. I kind of I kind of miss I miss the you know um, absolving of yourself and your responsibility uh-huh. I used to work and I'm jumping all over the place, but I used to work with this guy in sales, and he was really super Christian guy. And whenever like a sales call wouldn't go well, I would say, using from my you know my history, you know, I was like, look, that's what Jesus now, <laughs> like let him take it. So yeah, you know yeah, all your worries, yeah, yeah. you know all your worries. Just let Jesus have them. Yeah, now. Jesus you know? take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel, and yeah. then he would then he would fucking smash it, and I got yeah. no one to take the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm stewing in this shit. You yeah, know? I think my thing was uh, when we were learning about the Reformation or whatever, and the yeah the difference. I think we did it religion is that Catholics believe it is literally the body and the blood of Christ. And we're all like, oh, it's symbolic. He's like, no, act, no, yeah. no, you, we literally believe that. And then, you know, you're like, 
no, but I've I've been an altar server. I know it's still. But there's and there's, wine, there's the minutia you know? as well. Like there's almost like they get down to the. It's the millisecond that it touches your tongue, it changes. You know, maybe right. that's because you can't see it. <laughs> then you know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. No, it is literally the flesh. You know, they don't need to do that. They don't need to no, see literally. It's, it's the flesh. And exactly. Yeah. And we don't literally need to see them up there as well. Yeah. Like the tea, fine by me. You know. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Crucifix yeah, yeah. is fine. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah, I was a, I was a very religious kid. Yeah. I think, and then. Just, and so you tried to pray away your your first shift. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt bad about it, you know. <laughs> and then I, I later on I would pray to God for girlfriends and things like that. And yeah. Obviously, it just never worked out. So, you that's know, that's kind of energy. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the best energy to go into a relationship. Really. No. Well, you're here. Well, I prayed for you. I so prayed for it, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, it didn't happen, but obviously, there's a two way thing when it comes to relationships, and yeah. you have to be nice to the other person and all that kind of stuff. So, you know? how were you then when like yeah. phones came in, like when you could like text and have a take a fucking break for like a flirt? How were you then? Did you find that much better? What do you mean? Is it well, like... just like well, I don't know. You're 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 a bit younger than me, but like when when I I remember oh. having to like chat people up on the green, which I didn't do. Uh -huh. I, I would run around and probably try and stuff stuff my arse for attention or whatever. Uh -huh. And then I would like you know, go. go <laughs> <laughs> you're saying that as if that's a thing people do <laughs> well you know <laughs> it is not like, hey, look at this look at this Kinga you know uh, <laughs> that's a throwback that's Kinga a throwback. but with butts <laughs> King, if you don't remember was the I uh, don't you know what it's the big brother yeah, yeah I remember it yeah, yeah. I know. it's an infamous moment in I feel like we should all though stop bringing it up well everyone has it's just me. Yeah. It came up recently. Someone there's there's a King. great podcast called Unreal, the History of Reality TV. I heard about this. It's amazing. It talks about just how it was the Wild West in the 2000s mm. and Judy Care did not exist. Yeah. And it is fucking mental. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Know. So put stuff up my book. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Then you could text and actually like get a text and think, how would I respond to this if I wasn't a bag of flies yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes that's i was very much that yeah i was very bet into msn oh, uh, yeah. and there was girls i would talk roses to every day and send Me you too, know the I winks too you know the wink that was a kiss mm. that would take up the whole screen yeah that stuff i you know sending loves on bebo all that kind of stuff as in i would never speak to them in person because i was sure. too afraid mm -hmm. but online i was funny and charming and i had a silver tongue yes um but in real life absolutely not i was afraid of my own joy like yeah you know? i was like that uh, with with text and i was like you know i was like fucking el james 50 yeah shades, 50 shades <laughs> freed yeah you know and i wasn't even cutting down any of the words into you know uh, you know luv or whatever like that Same. you know yeah, yeah, i would yeah, yeah. spell it all out and then i would i don't care if it cost me six quid you know <laughs> to send this erotic novel of a text when i'm 16 yeah you know and i think it was like 16 my first shift mm. and then going in and then it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. and then holding hands like, <laughs> and then getting the meat just as the bus pulls up because that was literally the last part of the day yeah, yeah. and it was like should i get off the poly <laughs> you know yeah exactly and then back that, yeah. to like hey baby that was that was real special yeah <laughs> having a, a relationship on the internet but not actually in yeah real i had life. a few girlfriends big on that yeah so yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a cool podcast yeah <laughs> This is super cool. And we met our girlfriends on social media. No, I had an American yeah. girlfriend. Oh, very um, good. Yeah, I yeah. never had one of those now. I mean, um, it was really annoying. Like, <laughs> having to, like, log on, like, really late, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it was pre, like, it was pre-sex anything. Like, it was, mm. it was just really, like, wholesome. Yeah. You know, do you like Blink-182? Me too. Oh, my God, we're a girl, boyfriend, girlfriend. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, but it was good to get experience in talking to other, other humans. I remember mm. my brother had an online girlfriend, and uh, he was like, he, he was like in love, and he was like smitten, and he's like, and I was like, but like, what do you talk about? And I was like, well, look, how's this for a sign? Her favorite food is burgers, and I like them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not even his favorite, like, and I, and I, I'm I like them as well. And I like them as well. Yeah, you know, like that's the formation of a of a relationship. Yeah, you know. You know? But it's I think it's served our our experience on that. Maybe you're married obviously now, so yes. there's no need for this. But maybe our experience on uh MSN and things like that has prepared us for dating apps. Yes. Uh and things like that. Cuz I remember when I was a kid, I was like, well, I'm realistically I'm probably going to be single till I'm 40, so I'm going to have to go on a, a <laughs> yeah. dating website or whatever. Uh and now everyone's on them all the mm -hmm. time. Um and it's still absolutely horrible. It's, it's fucking so much worse now as an adult and trying to do all that sort of stuff. It's really? awful. What's, awesome. what's your least favourite? Dating app? Yeah. Oh, um, I hate Hinge. Yeah? I think. You hate Hinge? I think. The forced fun dating app? Yeah, because you're kind of like, gives people prompts 
and nobody knows they're all shit prompts and mm. nobody knows how to answer them and then you have people answering them sincerely so you know what it's like what do you look for in a partner mm. and like obviously you say something like pints or you're looking for Shiv Roy or you're looking for something yeah, funny yeah, like yeah, that yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. that's not even something funny. that highlights a personality aspect something and then it's just like honesty and integrity is the answer you get particularly in London or whatever yeah. where it's just everyone's such shit crap and you're like <laughs> How like it's like I can't swipe on someone knowing that they might be shite and I'm gonna be bored with them. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of a lot of that kindness. Yeah, but that, like, that gets more important to go to. Is get. someone who is unkind gonna look at that and be like, "Oh, sorry, I'll swipe left." Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not honest. Sorry. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. What's that? It just it all it says to me is that you probably have baggage from a previous relationship yeah. that I maybe don't want to wade into. It's a know? kind of an an I hate drama kind of red flag. Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah mm. I, I mean, luckily or unluckily, you know, I met my wife like 10 years ago just at the kind of the boom. The boom of Tinder and yeah, yeah, the yeah. Early, the early Tinder mm. boom, you know. It's a weird one because I, I feel like I'm the only single one of the big wave of online comedians. <laughs> yes. Do you yeah. know what I, mean? I was the only single man anyway. So it's kind of like, yeah, how do I, it's, it's very... Your, world's your oyster. In a way, but also not in a way. Isn't like when they meet me, do they think I'm funny all the time? When actually, yeah, I'm very sad. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's that kind of thing, and I, I, I find this with you as well. I feel like every time we're in a group situation, it's always very stressful. Yes, and I'm never that much fun compared to everybody else. And I'm always like, this is awful, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I remember being like, I was very nervous meeting you in the first place. Because, oh yeah, like yeah. Um, because I hadn't started the online comedy stuff and you had mm. and it's like you're the kind of the guiding star the the older brother of all of us because <laughs> you started quicker than we did mm. um, but it was like oh fuck if I fuck this up we won't be friends do you know that kind of thing <laughs> with, with bigger celebrities you're like yeah. I'll never see them again so whatever but when it's people who are more mundane people are more nervous almost mm. do you know that kind of thing yeah no I know what you mean yeah. it's actually weird because like, I think we, we, we were chatting at Electro Picnic you mm. know you, you, you were you were interviewing me and you oh were years fucking, ago yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. you had already had like your videos there, but you were still working at Joe yeah. in fact when you type in Tony Cantwell is a picture of you oh. <laughs> because of the <laughs> because of that that, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that video yeah um, but yeah no it can like I'm I'm very serious like I'm very mm. and I also just kind of like I have a very shallow cup for being on <laughs> yeah same you know, I think my social battery is very low yeah. all the time you know so it's hard to be good crack particularly when like you know say with the, the live podcast we did we got Shane Don Byrne who's mm, hilarious yeah. and Peter McGann who's really weird and really, yeah. also really funny I mean so it's probably like, the he was probably the, the problematic crooks <laughs> yeah 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 so <laughs> was there was like, a lot of that I, where I was like I was oh like, I, I kinda, can't yeah, you know I kind of knew I kind of thought I knew where this was going and then yeah. this has been the kind of nucle nuclear bomb pivot <laughs> that's I, I, did, I was like what do I do I can't compete with this I'm not gonna if I no, say I anything right now, yeah. it's going to go down like a lead balloon. Do you know that kind of thing? It just didn't. Do mm. you know? I, I find that very hard when I'm with other funny people mm. and I get a serious sense of imposter syndrome where I'm like, I'm so shit at banter. You know, if mm. I could prepare all of this in advance, I would be fucking great. But like, say doing improv or doing things like that where I'm like, I'm not funny. Yeah. I'm not that like I did phone it, phoning it in with uh, Justine there recently. Justine's yeah. fucking great at that sort of stuff. And it was like, I am a fraud. <laughs> you know, oh I've am... done phoning it in. I've just been yeah. like, I just need to fucking give up, like hang up my, you know, hang up my mic. The only times I've been successful is when I thought of a character before I go in and I'm shoehorned in somewhere. Yeah. You know? yeah, so, yeah, I think, <laughs> like, well, you times. know how it works. You know, I remember hearing some story about like, um, cause I think that there's a level of, there's a level of prep to looking spontaneous. Like mm -hmm. I think Neil Delamere, I think was, I heard some, I don't know if I can tell the story. I'll tell it anyway. Yeah. Um, I heard there was a bunch of comedians prepping for like an Irish panel show mm -hmm. and they were all just like, but like, you know, it's going to be off the cuff, right? Like we're not going to prepare anything. And they're all like, yeah, no, hundred percent. And yeah. And they were like, and they were even like, they were saying to Neil Delamere and you're not going to prepare it. And they're like, no, 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 I'll go in off the cuff. Showed up on the day and he had everything. Like he had reams and reams and reams yeah, of material, yeah. you know, and then was the funniest one. And they, and like someone told me that story being like, can you believe the fucking cheek of him? And I'm like, but just do that's what you're supposed, supposed to, do. to do you know you know as in like we did the 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 live thing you had the question have you ever been fined right? yeah off the cuff like i cannot answer that question like, yeah uh no and then that's it that's all yeah, i know i know but whereas if you'd given it to me an hour beforehand i'm like okay i can answer something funny for that because i'm not in the glare of all these sure. people looking at me yeah but i'm just i'm terrible in person so it's always that kind of thing <laughs> I'm just so unfun and like not good crack at all in those group situations. It really doesn't work that's for me. Not, like, you know? That's not true. No, I think you're being a yeah. little bit, I think you're a little bit harsh on yourself. And also like, you know, you are, 
<laughs> you are a very highly successful and incredibly funny person. And you are in those situations, but it's just, I think you just need a bit more, um, you know, meticulous, uh, you know, um, meticulous details to kind of be, be, you know, be on the right track. You know, yeah. you kind of just, yeah. you know, your spontaneity requires just for you now mm. at the moment, yeah, just yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit more kind of watering and planting. In I need advance. to work on myself. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Stuff. I do need to go into a room and not think everyone hates me. I think that's the main thing. Well, and you know, just you unlocking could... that of part of yourself. You know? <laughs> well, um, you could dispel that. You could dispel that straight away because they don't. But also, yeah. I mean, I was actually saying this to Pete recently. Like it, it, it's, it's only now, um, like I did. You know, it'll be out now. Like I'm in the cast for this LOL Ireland and I was show. Delighted to see that. Thank I was you like, very much. Oh my god, Tony Campbell's on this. He's like the funniest man ever. Like, Thank do you know that you. kind of thing? Thank like, you. I feel like you haven't gotten your dues when it comes to Irish TV. No, I haven't. So it's yet. really nice to see somebody pick you up because you're fucking hilarious. Like, well, I used know? to have this thing where I had like a kind of a you know a chip on my shoulder with like RTE, yeah. and then like I was driving by Donnybrook kind of in like that to, to RTE, <laughs> and my and my wife was all like, "Why are you doing that?" And I'm like, yeah. "You never booked me for a job." And then she's like, "Tell me one brief." That has ever landed on their desk that you've put together, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never asked them. <laughs> I've never asked them for anything." And yeah. I'm like, "Oh yeah, fucking hell!" Like I'm not like, and then I was like, "Shit, I need to get some briefs together," and I totally dropped that when I just realized. But anyway, so I'm I'm in this thing, and I, mm. but I, as soon as I was in there, I was just like. You know, there's big comedians in there, like, and, you know, comedians I admire, like Ashton B and, you know, yeah. and Jason Byrne and Deirdre Kane, Martin Angolo. And I'm just like, I I can't do, I don't think I'm as good as them. And that's not me beating myself up. I don't think I'm as good as them because I'm a huge fan of them. You yeah, know? yeah. So I can only do what I can do. And, he, and if they don't like it, they don't like it. But I oh. I can only do what I can do. But you know. yeah, I know what you mean. Like I, it when I saw it, obviously, whenever you see someone do well, mm. for me, because I'm a hateful, scornful little prick, mm. I get a bit of jealousy from it. Yes. And I was like, I saw that, yeah. and then I was like, no, but like, Michael, think of the reality of this. Like, if you actually did that, it would be your worst nightmare. That's yeah. a, that's my worst nightmare yeah. kind of show, yeah. where you have to make other people laugh. Because mm-hmm. when people don't laugh, even a normal conversation with me, I'm like, I fill the vacuum with they hate my guts. Yeah, oh my God. So to go in there with Ashling B and yeah. figure out that Ashling B hates my guts, yeah. I think would destroy me. It's like hitting know? the eject button of your soul. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm yeah. not here anymore. But it's like I've kind of realized the whole thing with like professional jealousy is that like you'll always see things that other people are doing mm-hmm. and be like, God, I wish I wish I was doing that. And there was one time I was, I was watching Darren and Joe had launched their podcast. I was like, fuck, I wish I had a podcast. Yeah. And then I looked up at my phone. I was on the set of holding and Graham Norton was there. And I was yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. are you, what the fuck? You can't do all these 100%. things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 100%. Kinda, but also like, that's like, you do just look at something on your phone and it's just that I don't have it right now because I'm on my phone. But like, literally you're in, you're in the room doing the thing that you're like, oh my God, if you told me I was doing this, I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember doing a gig you know, and it was just a good gig in the, in the Sugar Club, and mm. it was a gig that people had bought tickets for. And I was walking home, and was I was sure, your live feed, early. live feed. Oh, yeah. I went to see that. Do you remember yeah. I saw you? Yes, I, I remember. I came up to you afterwards, uh, and obviously just come off stage, and I hung around for a little bit too long. That's and tough. like, but I, I find now when people come up to me after a gig, I'm mm. like not together at all. I've yeah. seen it with other people where I'm like, that's the worst time to talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah. And then afterwards, I was like, oh fuck, I embarrassed myself. We're just only got well, you know, I kind of like. No, I'm buzzing. Know. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing <laughs> after after the before yeah. the gig. I'm like, I don't care who you are. I'm gonna fucking cut you down. Yeah. <laughs> one of my one of my you. favorite lines from you was uh, when we were backstage at Paddy Power. We were all like me, you, and Justine had spread out the because there's this big back garden yeah. of this tent, and we were all just pacing in different patterns. Yeah. And then you came past, and you just went, I'm anxious. <laughs> 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 no bit to it. It was There's very no bit to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, so it was Justine. Like Justine was do, like was was doing. Uh, I came off the thing, uh, the Sugar Club, mm. and I was like, "This is like I got uh, my fans were there to see it." Yeah. And then I saw Justine was like did, doing stand up in the Inter, and I was like, "That's a fucking that's a real comedian. She's yeah. doing stand up." Yeah. And I was just trying to look up from my phone, like, and I'm like carrying all my shit from just doing like. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is just insane how like on a like. <laughs> like quantum level you can just lie to yourself while staring at your phone about what you actually have and what your reality is you yeah know? yeah exactly it's crazy um but you know i did find and it's only a recent thing and it's probably not gonna last but it's like all i can do is just do what i think is funny and that was the only way i was ever mm. gonna survive yeah in that in that show i think by, by trying stuff out you realize what's for you and what isn't mm. and i kind of understand the reality of like 
okay, right, you mightn't enjoy being yourself on stage. That's fine. Loads of people don't do that. Loads mm. of people, like, say they like to say Ruth Jones, who does, like, Gavin and Stacey, is an excellent actress, all that kind of stuff. Panel shows, probably not her thing. Do you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing? I feel like I'm probably like that. I'm probably like a Robert Webb or a Richard Ayoade, mm-hmm. where I'm better on screen and I'm better acting mm-hmm. and being silly Egypts than, than trying to be myself, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. it's not my thing. Whereas, like, say with Killian, he's the opposite problem to me, where he's like, you know, he's not sure how to do characters because he's always just himself. Whereas yeah. I'm like, I would rather be anyone else, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think we all have different skill sets. But know? that's the thing. And that's why, you know, it's, um, I suppose, because it's just been, you know, such a kind of, it, it's been so hard. I mean, it's been, it's changed in the last five years, but there mm. was nothing, there was no place to be, to get a gig, you know? So yeah. every gig was like, is that, well, that's co- comedy, you know, like yeah, yeah. comedy has completely changed and it's, it's it's been very exciting, obviously, the last couple of years because it hasn't specifically been a stand up boom. I mean, yeah. there's been more stand up because I mean, look at like Ivy Gardens and who's playing there, and it's, it's a lot more kind of internet and bedroom comedians, yeah, yeah. you know, than ever. And it's you know, there's so there's that kind of live comedy boom because mm. of that, you know. But it's just the 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 pathways of just pursuing comedy are just so varied now so it's hard to know what is for me and what i'm jealous about yeah. and what i don't want you That's, know i think and remember we went to other side in mm-hmm. me that time and it was kind of like god everyone's doing music and they said everyone's doing it yeah. do you know because it's funny and it's like the thing at the moment mm-hmm. you know and it's great yeah. you know that we don't it isn't just limited to me trying to be myself you know i always think of like I think about Gemma Collins a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things is like, I'm not Gemma Collins. I am not a personality. I'm not those things. That's so I can't do what example. she does, you yeah. know? But she probably couldn't do what I do. No. You know? No. We've never asked her. She's never tried. <laughs> <laughs> I love that in the, the office in uh, Brent, it's all like, um, you know, we opened for a little known band called Texas, you know? Yeah. You know, and the, you know, um, but you know, they did what they did and they probably couldn't do what, you know, what, what I do. Like, I could do what they do. Probably what spurred them on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can do what I do. I could do what they do. Probably what spurred them on. Um, is there any kind of ideal kind of job? Now that you've tried a, f- a couple of things, mm-hmm. is there any kind of ideal like, oh, do you know, I could do this? Not even necessarily for the rest of my life, but I'd love a good phase of this. Um, it ties into who I admire and who I would want to be. And the answer is Sharon Horgan. Yeah. Because I love everything she does. She mm-hmm. picks her projects really well. Yeah. She makes good stuff. So mm-hmm. Bad Sisters is fantastic and mm-hmm. Catastrophe is fantastic. And she's a great actress in both of them. But she's also in This Way Up, which she's mm-hmm. absolutely brilliant in. She's in Bojack Horseman and yeah. Disenchantment and like all these really, really cool animated shows. She just picks everything yeah. really well. And I would just love a career like that. Mm-hmm. But again, she's not a stand up. And I'm kind of like, maybe, maybe that's not for me. Yeah. I say after doing a full tour and I'm about to go on to Edinburgh. <laughs> but like, you know, I would love a career like that where I'm yeah. writing, producing things and voice acting. I think mm. I would love those things. Yeah. You know, I love voice acting. It's so much I fun. Love voice acting. You know? Voice acting is, I've realized, the like the purest form of heroin for me mm-hmm. because everyone has to listen to every line yeah. that I see yeah. and that I say and like get that like can you do that again? You know, like I'm yeah. saying one line, like that's great. Every line is like spoon feeding me fucking dopamine. It's, I adore it. It's so good because you can retake <laughs> everything. Nothing's yeah, live. 100%, yeah. And it's like, there's no such thing as too much no. with voice acting because you really have to sell it. And I have this thing where I'm too, I'm afraid of giving too much. So mm. my performances, I think TV is great for me, but theater, I probably would struggle with. Do you know that, that kind of thing? And voice acting is great because you can go wherever you want with it. Mm-hmm. Like on the Michael Fry show, we have a witch and I do a very good witch. And yeah. it was just so much fun to do the laugh and just be ridiculous. Or do like someone falling off a cliff and you do the scream. Yeah. And it's, it's great. You can just play. It's yeah. so much fun. Like. Yeah. Well, we as actors get to play. You yeah. Know? <laughs> we're the biggest yeah. kiddies in, in the mall. We're the biggest kiddies in the sandpit. How, do you, how do you find actors? Um, I, I, The actors, I mean, most of the actors I know are actor comedians. People mm. who are kind of like actor actors. Do you know what? I've just nothing, just recently, especially after COVID, I just have nothing but heartbreak and sympathy for anyone who's trying to be a full-time actor, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I also kind of think that I don't know if you can just be an actor, actor, you know? That's, I feel I'm always very same. surprised that, the, that a lot of people don't do anything else. Yeah. Don't do anything else other than act. That's, you know? I, I couldn't make a living as just one thing, yeah. you know, as in just a writer or just an actor or just a comedian or whatever. Mm. I think you have to have 
everything. Mm. And I, I, what I found uh, kind of difficult because I'm a comedian and I take the piss all the time. Mm. I found it really hard to deal with people who were very serious yeah. about about yeah. acting. Do yeah. You know, even though I was on comedies and yeah. things like that, where I'm like, God, but it's fun. You know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, no, this is their craft and they're very. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I've not really met many of them. Mm. You know. But I suppose when like people who have maybe prioritized acting over other things, like Ali Fox is an actor and comedian, you know, mm. and she she's you know, she's probably done more more acting than anything else. And then when you see her, you can fucking tell like you can tell the difference of an incredible actor, you know, yeah. People yeah. Who, uh, or why why you need to maybe prioritize or do it just that and not mm. anything else. You yeah, know, you can see the difference. But I just don't know how that's sustainable, you know. Yeah. 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 And I, it's the same with musicians as well. Like, how do yeah. you just do music and not? All the other silly shit that I do. You know, yeah, I know. Because Ireland's turned its back on you. Yeah. Ireland turned its back on you. <laughs> the only reason you're here is because you fucking love Ireland. That turns its uh, back on you. I have not looked at the camera once. I know, this me whole neither. Time. I'm but like, you have a lovely wanna... side profile, and that's your good side. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, yes. it's your ring side. What's that? Your no, nose ring side. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I can see I'm, <laughs> I'm cool and not having a midlife crisis at all. One thing I wanted to ask you, though, and actually I want to do this before we, before we finish. Mm. How, how do you write music so when I like when we've done the Bureau de Change but obviously mm. you've done Viral Bangers uh, and Internet Mash is that the Volumes 1 and 2 yeah Volumes 1 and 2 <laughs> um, so you're very prolific at it and I mean what I think the reason why a lot go viral is because people are like I need to listen to this again and mm. this is amazing and it was like this is or like I'm sure you see it all the time this is actually just good, a good tune yeah yeah you yeah, know? yeah 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 what's, what's your process like is it you know is it lyrics is it is it music I'm actually terrible at lyrics Really? I'm really bad at it, yeah. But I can come up with is a hook. Yeah. I'm very good at hooks. Yeah. And it's something that you Peter can, Pan over here. can say very well, the opposite. Captain Hook. Okay, yes, sorry. Mr. Mr. Smee over here. I don't oh, know. Mr. Smee's better, yeah. I don't know. The other characters are called something different. It doesn't really work. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, I'm so yeah. glad I shoehorned that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Go comedy, on. it's comedy. Yeah, it's comedy. Um, yeah, I, I think I can, I can do a line that you can repeat over and over again, mm. and that's catchy. And I, because I really love pop music, mm. and I love music that's adjacent to pop, so mm. indie pop or chamber pop or that dream pop, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that sort of shit, right? Um, so I'm capable of that, but when it comes to lyrics, I really do struggle. Mm. So the reason I started doing the the videos, like turning videos into music, is because I can't think of lyrics. Mm. Uh, and I had a song on my laptop that was like quite nice. It was very war paint esque, and I was like, okay, lyrics. Fuck. And sometimes I'll get a bottle of water and just read off ingredients or like the blurb in the back. Oh, yeah. And be like, does that work? And then I was like, do I have it in my notes app? And I had the Ethan McGregor voice note. And I was like, right, does that work? That's great. Yes, it does. It actually works perfectly for this. And I found that loads of songs like yeah. that. So the best example is the Tony McGregor one. Yeah. The way he speaks is very lyrical. Or yeah. Liam Payne is very lyrical as well. The way he yes. speaks. So it, they, you can, it works that way. And it's just another hook then because you can put the words in and put the notes around it, you know? But, that's hard yeah. though because people people like I mean I don't know many pop <laughs> you know pop hit makers but finding a hook is like the is like the you know that's like the, the golden chalice mm. <laughs> but it's the one thing on music I really like yeah. you know I'm kind of like I'm I'm all all for like meandering math rock sometimes but I feel like my favourite thing mm. is something I can home in the car or sing along to or that kind of thing. So you I had that it's... at the Bureau de Change every single time. I mean, yeah. you had the, you know the, when you had the robot song the, the first year, and I've the walk around the house like I come home to you. I <laughs> come home. home yeah. to... so it's like what's that about E. T. Fingering the guy. Being fingered by E. T. <laughs> We were telling my mother I was in it, and then halfway through, I was like, I shouldn't have told her about this. I was like, don't look it up. She's like, why? Yeah. Never mind. I was like, don't, just don't. Do they like, like your stuff? Um, I think they're a little bit horrified to be honest okay, I think, yeah. like comedy's just not really their thing so it's, sure. it's uh, yeah I mean they're very supportive of the fact that it makes me an income and all that kind of stuff yeah. but it's just not their not their cup of tea and that's mm. fine like not everyone's gonna like your stuff mm. and my audience isn't 60 year olds yeah. you know, so it's kind of like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. totally fine I'm no. totally okay with that you 100%, know? 100%. <laughs> um, what's the song that you were that has taken you the longest to make that you thought um, you, might, you probably wouldn't even finish Oh, uh, Nadine Coyle was a challenge. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I mean, so but it works so well. It does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some of them you spend hours on. There was one I did for um, the Jerry Hannon thing on on the Late Late Show. You know, the, oh yeah, the guy yeah, in the mustard yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. And spent ages on it. Couldn't find the hook, and it just took me ages. And then it wasn't even that good in the end. So I was like, <laughs> "Fuck's sake!" But the ones you sh you fart out. Yeah. Like, the one I did recently. Where is John Rogers, right? Yeah. Half an hour, I would say. Yeah. Easily half an hour. Like, just because I wanted to do... I was supposed to be doing my taxes. Mm. And I was like, I'm, I, I need to 
see if this works and it just worked. See, that's you know? what I miss. I miss mm. this job a little bit being a procrastination, you know, yeah. being procrastination for other tasks because there's, mm. there's a release of energy that yeah. kind of comes from just like them doing something. That I don't want to be doing that, so I'm just going to fuck around with something, yeah. you know, that you kind of lose a little bit of. I mean, you know, you make up for it because you have all the time and you get to do whatever you want. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. there's an element of kind of like nipping away and just like making sure no one's looking and trying to just get something fucking funny down, you know? Yeah. Um, I think you've you've got a very good... So I suppose if there's anyone watching this or listening to this mm-hmm. who, you know, I, I think there's a good compass point in following your passion for the thing that you procrastinate the most about in work, especially yeah. if it's something that you make yourself, you know? Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you just can have that one. For yeah, free. there you go. Advice um, from Uncle Tony. You can have it. People, some people call me an older brother. Some people call me uncle. Yeah, you know? I, I think you're, you're not so much an older brother. I think you're like an older brother's cool friend who's nice to you. Like, fuck, you that's know? great. <laughs> I like that. That's what I think you are. Anyway, I did the bandwagons podcast yeah. one time, and they were like, "You're just like a cool uncle," and I'm like, "Fucking uncle." I mean, yeah, I mean, I know they're like... Brilliant impression of Fanula Jones. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're like an uncle. (laughs) Mind their soup on the floor. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, I suppose I'm like 10 years older than you, but still, like, you know, you know, maybe you just... I thought we were like contemporary friends. Yeah. You know? (laughs) You can be friends with your uncle. (laughs) Anyway. uh, Michael Fry, have you anything to plug? This will be out uh, Tuesday week. Tuesday week. Um, no, I do not. Not at nice. the moment. I am. Well, no, actually, sorry. Me and Killian are playing Body and Soul Festival nice. on the 17th of June. And we are also, I'm doing uh, Token Straight uh, myself and Shane Don Byrne, Lawsy Byrne, Felix O'Connor and Ali. I can't remember. Sorry, Ali O'Rourke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we are all doing um, something for Pride, which is oh, nice. Oh, great. So um, we're doing that. And then myself and Killian are playing the Edinburgh Fringe the last two weeks of August so if you are over come and see us it will be slightly different to the ones we've done Mm. uh, around Dublin and the tour we did but it's still more or less the same stuff so make a decision yourselves but do come see us please sell the shit out of that yeah (laughs) (laughs) look Uh, if you're Irish and you're going to be over there go on yeah go on there's nothing better than being a bunch of paddies in on a packed uh, Friday or Saturday fill it up there'll be like producers from TV and stuff there they always are in Edinburgh fucking bad so fill it up laugh as loud as you can yeah. And uh, that'll that'll trick them all into thinking I'm very popular and funny. That's great. And, and what is the postal address of the residents who'll be staying? Uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm not clear. But we're playing Underbelly in Bristol Square. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Michael Fry. Tony Cantwell. Thanks for coming into my shed. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. It's Tony Cantwell shit show. He's doing it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's the falsetto we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do it at the live show and then I got...